Good morning, friends. I greet you all in Jesus' wonderful name. It's good to be with you again this morning. You already know what faith is. You practice it every day when you turn on your alarm or when you get into a lift or even get into a car. I wonder what you do when you sit on a chair. Do you first check out the tensile strength of the metal that the chair is made for and make sure that it can hold up your weight? No. You assume because of your past experiences with chairs that the chair will hold up your weight and so you simply sit on the chair. Now, it's okay to have faith in a chair for holding up our weight, but we need something a little bit better than that when it comes to spiritual faith, don't we? What is the object of your faith when it comes to spiritual things. In 2 Timothy 1 verse 12, Paul says, I am not ashamed because I know in the one whom my faith is set and I'm convinced that he's able to protect what has been entrusted to me until that day. For Paul, his faith was in Jesus Christ for his salvation. But why is faith so important? Faith is one of the few things that Jesus actually commends. In Matthew chapter 15, when Jesus is dealing with a Canaanite woman, he says to her, Woman, your faith is great. Let what you want be done for you. And at that moment, her daughter was healed from that very hour. In Matthew chapter 8, when Jesus is talking to the centurion, he's astonished, he's amazed. Think about that. Jesus was amazed by something. And what was he amazed by? He was amazed by the man's faith. And he says to those who followed him, I tell you the truth, I have not found such faith in anyone in Israel. In Mark chapter 10, when Jesus was talking to blind Bartimaeus, he says to him, go, your faith has healed you. And immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the road. So faith has incredible power and Jesus takes notice of it and he's, he's actually, he marvels at people's faith. That's one of the things that he, he commends as a positive thing. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we're told that three things will remain. Everything in this world is passing away, but three things will remain. Faith, hope, and love. Notice that? Faith will still remain. That's why it's so important. In Hebrews Chapter 11, verse 6, we are told, Now without faith, it is impossible to please God. For the one who approaches God must believe that he exists and he rewards those who seek him. You cannot even please God if you do not have faith. Now I know we both, we all want to please God, don't we? We want to live a life that brings honor and glory to God and pleases him. Evans says that all other graces find their source in faith. Think about that. We are saved by faith. Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9 tells us that. We are sanctified by faith. Acts chapter 26 tells us that. First Peter tells us that we are kept by faith. And Romans 1, 5 verse 1 says we have peace through faith. In Hebrews chapter 4 it tells us that we can never enter God's rest unless we have faith. You need faith. To experience all of the wonderful blessings that God has for you. Hebrews chapter 11 is called the faith chapter. And with good reason. It mentions a number of people who did incredible things for God. Stories are recounted in Hebrews chapter 11 from the Old Testament of people, men and women, who acted in faith. And because of their faith, they were able to achieve incredible things for God. But what is spiritual faith? Well, the answer is found in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. And this is what it says. It says, faith is being sure. The idea here is, is something has a substance, a foundation, something that is firm. We have an assurance of something. Imagine a building and, and a building is built on a foundation. Well, that's the idea that, that faith has a foundation, a substance to it, something that is strong, firm, that you can build on. You see, faith is not just something that we do blindly. God it doesn't expect you just to blindly follow you, follow him. He's given us enough evidence to know that our faith is not misplaced in him. We can trust God. We have the whole of the scriptures that tell us about who God is, explain to us his character, that he's good, that he's trustworthy, that he's a protector, a provider, that he blesses. We know all these wonderful things about God. Our own experience tells us that when we pray to God, he answers us. Then when we speak to God, God hears us. 
that God is good. All around us, nature declares God's glory. The Bible tells us that heavens declare the glory of God. So we're surrounded by enough substance, foundation, to know that our faith is not misplaced. It's a historical fact that Jesus came into this world, that he died on a cross, and it can be proved that he rose from the dead again. You see, God is not asking you to blindly follow him. He's given you substance, something to be sure of. Faith has that. Faith is being sure, it is a firmness to it, of what we hope for. Well, what is it that we hope for? Well, in the context of Hebrews chapter 11, if you notice in Hebrews chapter 10, the context is all about salvation. That is what we hope for. Hallelujah. We hope to be saved. We hope to be with God in heaven one day. And we have been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ that has been shed for us on the cross. And that is what our faith is in, that he will save us. Secondly, he says, so faith, first of all, has a, has a substance. It has a, something that we base it on, a firm foundation. And secondly, the Bible tells us that it's been convi convinced of what we do not see. A conviction, a, a kind of evidence. It's acted upon. Faith is not just an intellectual thing. It's not just something, well, I know that God is good. I know that God is good. And now I live as if God is good. I know that God can protect me, and now I live without fear because I know the protection of God over my life. I know that God will provide for my every need, and so I don't worry about anything because I trust and live that way with God. Think about, uh, imagine your wife tells you to go to, to buy milk at the shop. And as I go to the shop, I, I, I walk to the aisle that's containing all those kind of things. And I see a bottle and on the bottle is written milk. Now, when I'm in the shop, I don't take the bottle and, and open it and, and have a quick swig and say, well, yes, that's definitely milk. I trust because it says milk on the bottle. I simply take the bottle. I go to the counter, I pay for the milk, and I go home. And when I'm home, I open it, and again, I don't do some kind of test on the milk to make sure that it's milk. I just pour it into a glass and I drink the milk. There's enough experience, enough evidence of the past, enough substance to know that when somebody writes milk on the bottle, it's probably milk. And so I just act on that. Well, that's the picture of what the Bible tells us faith is. Faith is, has some sort of substance to it, something that you build your foundation on. And for us, that's the word of God. It's our experience of God. It's, it's what we've seen of who God is in the past. And then we act on that. We live it out. Think about that for a second. And I want you to, to put yourself in that position. The disciples said to Jesus, Lord, increase our faith. And what does Jesus say to them? He says, well, if you had faith even as tiny as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, go from here to here and it would be done. You see, it's not how much faith you have. It's what your faith is based in. You see, I think you can do something to increase the substance of your faith. I think you can, well, not really increase the substance, but what you know about the substance of your faith. Imagine that you know your house is built on a foundation, but you don't know how big it is. And as you dig away, you start to see, wow, the foundation is even bigger, even stronger than I imagined. Well, I guess that's what our walk with God is a little bit like. You know, every time we read scripture, we read about something about God, and that increases the substance or what we know about who God is. Every time I pray and God answers my prayer, my, my faith is strengthened because I know more about who God is. The things that I'm trusting God for today are not the same as the things I trusted God for 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Because the substance of my faith has increased. I can trust God for greater things today because I know God is trustworthy. He's proved himself faithful in those little things. And slowly but surely I've seen him be faithful in bigger and bigger and bigger things as I've seen the substance of my faith increase. That means that you and I can do something about increasing what we know about God. I want to encourage you, keep reading the word of God. Keep spending time in your quiet time, speaking to God, praying to God, asking God to bless you and show you what to do in your daily life. Commune with God so that you may know more about God. The Bible says, if we seek him, we will find him. Seek God. 
so that your faith may be strengthened and the knowledge of what you know about God may be strengthened and strengthened and strengthened so that you may trust God for even greater things. Secondly, it's not good enough just to have an intellectual faith. It has to be evidenced. It has to be lived out. We need to see that you're convinced of your faith. Faith is not faith unless it is practiced. You've got to put it into practice. Are you living out your faith? That's the question that we need to ask ourselves. We know that God is a healer. Well, are you trusting God to heal you? We know that God provides. Do you trust God to provide for your daily needs? We know that God blesses us. Well, are you living in such a way? We know that God has a plan and purpose for our life. Are you seeking God for that plan and purpose over your life? And when God shows you what that plan is and his purpose is for your life, do you do what God tells you to do? My friends, I want to encourage you to be people, men and women of faith. For that, your faith needs a substance, something to be sure on, something to be secure in. And that's found in God's word and your relationship with him in your prayer time, in your devotional life with him. As you grow in your knowledge of God, you will see that you, your faith is not misplaced in him. He is stronger than you can even imagine. He is better and more incredible than, than you can even think about or dream about. The foundation goes far deeper than what we know. You will see that as you daily walk with God. And secondly, I want to encourage you to live out your faith. Be a person of faith. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to be looking at how that works practically. What is the evidence of our faith and how it should be lived out? And we're going to be looking at some of the characters found in Hebrews chapter 11. And as we do that, we'll see practical ways that we can live out our faith. But right now, think about what God is asking you to do. And ask yourself, is there evidence of my faith? I pray that you will put it into practice. Let us pray. Dear God and Heavenly Father, we thank you that even the faith is a gift from you. And the ability to trust you is a gift from your hand. Lord, we thank you that you don't blindly ask us to trust you in things, but you've given us enough evidence. You've shown us a time and time again, even in our hearts, we know that you are a good and faithful God. All around us, we see your glories. As we read your word, our experience of you shows us again and again that you are a faithful, good, wonderful God. Lord, help us to develop our picture of you so that the substance of our faith will be increased. And Lord, help us to practice our faith by trusting you daily, by living the way you expect us to, by being people of faith. And may there be evidence in our lives of our faith. Bless us in this, we pray. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. As I say, we're going to be talking about this in the next couple of weeks. And we want to keep in contact with you. If you have a prayer request, uh, please comment prayer and someone will pray with you. And uh, if you would uh, like to subscribe to our channel, if you're watching on YouTube or if you're following us on, U on, on Facebook, please follow us so we can keep better contact with you. God bless you and have a wonderful day.